Hi folks, Nella here. Um, so this is going to be a response to Positively Thrifty's prompt about secondary characters, uh, particularly secondary characters uh, that are not shelled as dolls. <coughs> so, I have a lot of stories and I have a lot of secondary characters, um, but I decided to just talk about four um, four of them in this video, <coughs> because even with only four, it is going to get very long, very fast. So, uh, first off, <coughs> uh, first off is a character from The Changeling, which is Flair and Drew's story, and the character is Nic Nicola Soman. Um, and he goes by Soman most times. And Soman is actually Flair's biological cousin, um, which means that um, he is also Drew's cousin. <coughs> if you remember, Flair is the titular changeling, um, and Drew was the human child raised in her place. Uh, so, Soman, um, to give you a visual, Soman has green skin, um, but there's kind of this effect on his skin that looks like ripples in water. Um, it's really weird to describe, but that's what it looks like. Um, he has hot pink hair, <laughs> and he has rainbow colored eyes, um, which is a bit disconcerting, but, um, he's very colorful. Anyway, um, so Soman is actually very important in the Changeling story because it's because of his mistake that Flair was actually put in place of a human baby. Um, that was not the plan. The plan was that a wooden doll was going to be put in place of the human baby and that the Nixies were going to have two daughters. Um, what ended up happening was that Soman and his little, little cousin, uh, Nitalka, uh, we're playing hide and seek with some of the other cousins, um, and someone was helping Talka hide, and he put her in the crib, and she used her natural magic to make herself look like the wooden doll, and then someone went to go and hide on his own. Unfortunately, Talka fell asleep, but her magic kept her disguised, and no one thought to check to see where the children were. Um, so, Soman actually really, really, really blames himself for what happened to Natalka, um, who, of course, grows up to become Fleur. Um, so, he's actually a really important secondary character because, like I said, it's because of him that Fleur was a changeling, and it's actually also because of him that Drew finds out where Fleur is staying. Um, because Drew pretty much used Soman's guilt to get his help in tracking down uh, Fleur, and uh, it is Soman who figures out where she is and tells Drew how to get to where she is where she may be. Um, I actually had, he was actually created because I wanted to get a green Bobobi Tony back in like 2009, I think. Um, I've since decided that I'm like not going to get him as a doll because as important as he is in the story, he actually has no importance at the curiosity shop itself. Um, so, yeah, he's just going to stay a character. 
Um, and now another character from the Changeling story, uh, who, in contrast to Soman, actually does play an important role at the Curiosity Shop. And one that I do have some intention of shelling at some future date. And that is Flair's very, very good second best friend. By which I mean she has two best friends, not that he is the second best one. Um, <laughs> and his name is Fusio Dubois. Uh, though everyone just calls him Fu. Uh, this is a dream selfie of him. And Fusio um, is actually one half of a two-souled creature. I don't want to say two-spirited because that is actually a term um, in Canada that we use. So um, it's a two-souled creature. <coughs> and um, unfortunately, it was from a different plane of existence. And when it entered the same plane that Flair's world is in, the human world is in, um, it could not have two souls, so they broke apart. Um, one fell into a child that was dying, um, because uh, Fusio was not going to make it. The uh, cord had wrapped around his neck and he was going to die. Um, but the soul, uh, one of the two souls, fell into his body, gave him bit enough of a push to keep living as they removed the cord from his neck. Um, unfortunately, the fact that Fusio only has half of his soul does cause a lot of problems. Um, he has no natural barrier to any negative outside influence. Um, whether that's other people around him being angry or being hateful um, or whether it's something more extreme like actual evil spirits um, he has no protection um, it doesn't cause him much trouble until Flair leaves though uh, because Flair has a natural protective um, power that she exercises unconsciously. Um, unfortunately, I keep saying unfortunately, um, but that does describe Fu, poor unfortunate Fu. Um, but what happens to Fu once Flair leaves is he is left utterly defenseless. Um, and he suffers a lot of emotional and mental trauma. Um, it does not go well. Um, it actually goes so not well that um, his family almost puts him on suicide. Actually, they do put him on suicide watch, but not like formally taken to a hospital sort of thing. Um, thankfully, <laughs> uh, Fleur and Fu's other other best friend, Acantha Banning, this girl. Uh, gets Fu um, back in contact with Flair, um, and Fu decides to go to this shop where Flair is living um, so that they can try and figure out what's going on. I'm sorry if my screen keeps shifting, but my cat is moving my laptop. <laughs> anyway, um, and Fu actually ends up being important at the curiosity shop because um, they do end up figuring out what the problem was and um, they essentially kind of use Fu as a canary in the coal mine. Um, he gets to a point where he can still be protected um, by Flair's power um, but also still be able to detect whether other people have um, evil or malicious intent towards um, people at the curiosity shop or to the curiosity shop itself. Um, and actually, another 
thing about Fu and Flair. Um, everyone except for the three best friends, that's Fu, Flair, and Cantha. Everyone except for those three firmly believe that Fu is in love with Flair. Um, and that that is why um, he ended up suffering so much when she left. They go, oh, well, he was pining for his love. No. No. Uh, Fu is actually asexual, and there's only, only one character that I've ever seen him have, and ever been him having a romantic attraction to, and that is the person who literally hosts the other half of his soul. Um, so I don't know if that really counts as romantic attraction, actually. Um, but he's definitely asexual. Um, so the third secondary character is actually from Owen's story this time. Um, so he's from Lies Told to Children. Holy crap, there's a lot of guys on this list. I did not realize that. Um, okay, so the third character, and yet another guy, is Rudolph from Lies Told to Children. And uh, he is actually the friend of Master Faust and Master Mordred. So Ethel and Alwyn and Ethel's um, masters. And um, Rudolph is really important to the plot of Lies Told to Children. Um, mostly because he kind of acts like the... Was it kind of like the knowledge bank for Alwyn and Ethel? Um, he has knowledge of both of their masters um, because he actually has been friends with them since their early teens. Um, and he has a lot of magical knowledge, um, but he doesn't have any of the political hang ups, I'll say. Um, because he actually does not have the rank of Master Practitioner of Magic. Basically, thanks. Basically, he doesn't have that. Not because he lacks the knowledge, um, but because his Mistress of Magic, um, was actually an elemental, um, which is from a different plane of existence. Yay, different planes of existence. Um, but she had to leave um, their plane of existence to go and deal with something back home before uh, Rudolph and her could do the ritual to make him a master practitioner of magic. And she has been tied up in bureaucratic red tape ever since. Which actually really sucks because essentially not only does he not have recognition for his knowledge, um, unlike Faust and Mordred, who have a really twisted relationship with their mistress of magic, Rudolph has a really sweet one with his. Like, it is crazy sweet. Like, they are like, do high school sweethearts in love sickeningly sweet and they haven't been able to see each other um that's actually why he's upset about the situation he doesn't care about the rank he doesn't care about the privileges he just wants his love back um but anyway because he's not involved with all the political power struggles um He's very much a neutral in the fight against uh, Nata because he doesn't have the same constraints as Faust and Mordred do. Um, and he has, if anything, more general knowledge than those two because those two were actually really, really sheltered and manipulated by their mistress of magic, whereas he had a healthy relationship with his. 
sorry, every time I think about the fact that, like, the love of his life is tied up in bureaucratic red tape and they haven't been able to see each other for at least five years, I'm like, my heart, my heart. Um... He's actually a character I have no intentions of shelling as a doll, though. Um, mostly because he's, yes, very important in Lies Told to Children. He has absolutely no connection to the Curiosity Shop. None at all. Um, he doesn't even know... He kind of knows of the legends, but he doesn't quite believe in it. At least not until Faust tells him, Oh, hey, guess where we're staying? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the third of the secondary characters, third secondary characters. Um, and now for the last one, who is actually the most recent one I've come up with. Um, and her name is Jordan Belmont. <coughs> her nickname is Stonewall. And, um, her birth name was Cindy Belmont. Well, Cindy, and then she took Belmont when she got older. Um, and she is Lucas Belmont's, uh, I keep saying she. Darn it! I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still not sure entirely what pronouns she prefers. Um, but I'm just going to use female pronouns right now because it's a bit easier for me to keep track of. Also, she's not a guy! Yay! Um, anyway, but, uh, Jordan is Lucas's older sister. <coughs> or sibling, I should say. Um, whether she is okay with female pronouns or not kind of depends on the day and how she's feeling that day. What's the term for that? There's actually a term for that. Um, but I'm forgetting it right now. Anyway, um, <laughs> that isn't important right now. Um, what is important is that she connects Maddie, so Mattia's story, and Lily's story. Um, because she is Lucas's, uh, sibling, so she connects to Lily's story. But she's also Maddie's friend. Um, and, um... Their friendship is actually a bit strange because uh, Jordan is significantly older. Um, right now, I'm thinking she's between 7 and 10 years older. Um, Lucas and Maddie are almost the same age. I think it's only off by a few months. Um, but uh, Jordan and Lucas and their family spent about a year in uh, the outport where Maddie lives. <coughs> and while she was there, Jordan made quite the impression. Um, she started a GSA at the local high school, something that had never existed before. And actually, after she leaves, never exists again. <laughs> um, but she also attended a lot of rallies in her youth. Um, which meant that she dragged Lucas and Maddie to a lot of rallies if she was supposed to be babysitting them. Um, including one time when she didn't tell anyone that she was going to be going, and then everyone freaked out. Imagine an entire town searching for two children, and you can imagine the, um, amount of talking to that Jordan got after that. <clears throat> but anyway, um, Jordan is, like I said, Lucas's, uh, older sibling, um, and she is, I don't think I'm going to shell her, um, just because, I don't know, I kind of feel like I wouldn't be able to do her justice, um, she's a very interesting character, and she has a really unique look. Um, she's supposed to have very, very broad shoulders. Um, like, 
extremely broad shoulders. Um, but, and she's a bit muscular, but, like, not, like, goes, like, she's very strong. Um, and that does come across, but she's also, well, she's also just straight up a big girl. Um, she's very tall, very broad-shouldered, um, overall big. Um, and she has darker skin than Lucas. And I'm not sure how she does her hair right now. Um, it kind of changes between being like half shaven on one side to very spiky. Um, but she... I really like her character. Um, the reason why I ended up using her to connect Lily and Maddie's story... Stories. Sorry. They have two separate stories. Their stories um, is because... Um, I wrote a scene where Lucas is getting teased mercil mercilessly um, by his older sibling about um, the fact that he is, you know, taking dance lessons to see this girl um, that he's only, like, just met um, because she's, like, that pretty and he wants to have an excuse to spend more time with her. Um... And I end up actually, only a few days later, writing a similar scene with um, Maddie, with uh, Maddie talking uh, with a friend, at that point he was an unnamed friend, about the fact that, hmm, you know, I didn't think I swung that way, but Nagisa looks really, really, really good in my clothes, and it is making me think things that I was not thinking about her before. Um, and I realized once I started writing the other person's reaction that that person was Jordan. Once again, I went, wait a moment, that is the same person that is teasing these two characters. Um, and basically going like, tell me more, tell me more. <coughs> so, um... She's an extremely recent character, but she's also a lot of fun to write. Um, she's kind of like, what can I say? She is a LGBT counselor. So she's a counselor and LGBT resource center. Um, she is, like I mentioned before, significantly older than both her younger brother and her friend, Maddie. Um, so right now I'm kind of picturing her in her early 30s, is what I'm kind of going for right now. Um, but she is just like pure awesomeness and like mother hen and protective big sister and like everything all rolled into one. She's like this amazing character. Um, and, um, actually, I'm just going to end this with one last note about her. Um, her nickname is Stonewall. And, um, the nickname actually has two reasons behind it. Uh, first one is that, um, basically, she is a Stonewall um, if she is going for something, horses could not move her. Um, she fought to establish a GSA at a high school while knowing that she would not be there for more than a year. Um, she fought to get to her position. She fights for funds for the resource center. Um, all of these other things. Um... So she's a very determined person, and she's kind of the stone wall that not only is very stubborn, but she also protects people. Um, and of course, stone wall is also in reference to the stone wall riots. Um, she kind of fashions herself as a protector, as so a person that. Had she been there, she would have been, you know, like, dragging people out of their 
um, and like beating up and beating up people um, to protect her people, essentially. Um, so okay, that, this video is long enough. This is plenty long. So, bye everyone.